Well, good Thursday morning to you. Hope you have been enjoying this week touring the region with us. And yesterday, tour guide Rachel took you to the Sea of Galilee. Wasn't that fun exploring that whole region, its geography, but also, of course, some of the amazing things that happened on that Lake of Galilee. Well, today we're off on a day trip to Laodicea. And if you remember, Laodicea is that little place that is listed by name in the book of Revelation. It was a place where we know one of the churches of the uh, Roman province of Asia was, where that had been planted at the time of Paul. And so I'm going to take you off there and we're going to reflect a little bit on the water sources that we find in Laodicea and how that brings to life some of what we read about the letter to that the angel of the church wrote to the Laodicean church. But first of all, a little bit of geography. So where exactly is Laodicea? Well, we read that Laodicea is approximately 11 miles west of Colossae. 6.2 miles south of Hierapolis and about 100 miles east of Ephesus. So it's in that region of Ephesus. Ephesus was on a trade route. So this is a region which is in the uh, Roman uh, province of Asia. It's modern day Turkey and specifically southwestern Turkey. And it was a really prosperous region. As I said, it was on a trade route. And Laodicea itself was known to be an incredibly wealthy uh, little uh, community which um, had quite a high density of population from the Jewish background in um, under Antiochus the Great um, the emperor had transported 2,000 Jewish families and moved them into this region many of whom settled in Laodicea so it had a high uh, Jewish population then the believing Christian population of which some would have been messianic background um, and then also, of course, the other um, groups of people from the Roman Empire of the day. So spiritually, it would have been mixed a bit like Ephesus. You had the, the temples to Diana and, uh, and others. And um, you also had a very mixed spirituality there. But we know that one of the earliest and I guess may, maybe one of the most influential churches was planted there. And we know that it was under the sort of pastoral oversight of Paul, um, because when he wrote his letter to the Colossian church, he actually mentions Laodicea four times in that letter. And he asks the Colossian church to read his letters to the Laodicean church and also to make sure that they read the letter that he wrote to the Laodicean church. So Paul definitely had an influence on this Laodicean church. We're not sure whether he actually planted it or whether it was one of his co-workers like Epaphras more likely. We also know that Laodicea geographically was actually in a valley. So it was surrounded as many of those regions were by hills and mountains and it itself was in a valley quite low down. Um, it was also on a river, it was the river Lycus, and because of that it had its, its, its natural water source there. But there's, here's the interesting part. When we read the um, letter to the Laodicean church written in Revelation, out of all the seven churches, it is the only one that is not commended for anything. But really the letter is incredibly negative. It's very critical of the Laodicean church. And you'll remember that the verses that we particularly identify with the Laodicean church are these that we find in Revelation chapter 3. And it says this, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. But because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Now that's not a very nice picture, is it? And it's not very commendable either. And so as we go off to tour Laodicea today, we need to ask some questions. What was the angel talking about when he was speaking about the hot or cold? Why use that picture? If we put our 21st century lenses on to look at this landscape of Laodicea, we might think of hot and cold as hot, in terms of faith at least, is always kind of positive, it's the passion, the heat, the fire, and cold we usually think of as, you know, a faith that has died, a faith that has gone cold. So we don't think 
naturally in terms of hot and cold as both being positive. But the suggestion is that actually both hot and cold were being commended as good alternatives and things to aspire to. And in fact, it was lukewarm that was the thing that was negative, the thing that was dangerous territory. And this is why this is so fascinating. What the, John, uh, the, the revelation of John shows and what the angel of the church was doing was picking up the natural landscape of Laodicea and speaking in picture language that would instantly have made sense to the Laodicean church. Let me explain that further. As I said, Laodicea was in a valley, so it was very difficult to get water, drinkable water, to that source in the bottom of the valley. The Romans had systems of aqueducts running and managed to get water from the mountains above in the north and bring that water down the valley um, and down the mountainside into the valley for the Laodiceans to drink. And that water from the mountains in the north was fresh, was cold and was pure mountainous water that was really fantastic. It did have quite a high mineral content in it, but it, on the whole, if it was cold, ice cold from the mountains, it was perfectly refreshing and actually wonderful in the heat of that region. From the south, the other way in which they could um, pump in or channel in water was from the south. And there, there were um, hot springs, which also were very useful because they were hot healing springs and their mineral content was very useful for the healing rituals of the day. So from the north you had the refreshing cold waters from the south, the hot springs. The problem was this, that by the time the water got from either down the mountainside from the north all the way down into the valley or all the way up from the south, it was neither hot nor cold anymore, but it was lukewarm. And that is the absolute natural picture that was in their geography. And the problem was that because of the high mineral content, the very natural involuntary reaction, apparently, to drinking that water that was now lukewarm was that you would literally, your body would literally react to it and would literally spew it out. You couldn't help but vomit it back up. And that is the picture that the angel to the church of Laodicea is using, which would instantly have made sense to them. So he wasn't saying hot is good, cold is bad. He was actually saying, I wish you were either really hot, like the mineral springs that are useful for healing, or really ice cold that are fantastic for drinking and refreshing. But actually you are lukewarm. You are of no use whatsoever. And that was quite a damning report of this church that they were neither hot nor cold and so were of no use to the community in which they were planted. Highly critical of them. So what is the good news in all of this? Well the good news is that the angel of the church was writing to them as a wake-up call and he was saying you have grown complacent and in fact if we pick up uh, in Revelation chapter 3 we see that it goes on to say for you say I am rich I have prospered I need nothing and that is of course the echo of a wealthy region that knew its wealth came from salve and minerals and lotions and potions that it produced and also we know that it produced cloth and garbs and garments that were apparently incredibly beautiful and very rich and, and so they, they obviously said, we're rich, we're prosperous, we're fine, we don't need God. But the angel of the church says, but you don't know that you are actually wretched, pitiable, poor, blind and naked. Therefore, I counsel you. This is the wake up call. Come to me and buy gold refined by fire so that you may truly be rich. And white robes, the robes of God's righteousness, to clothe yourself with and cover, cover the shame of your nakedness. Buy from me the salve, the anointing oil for your eyes, rather than the ointment that you are proud to produce. So he picked up all of their language and said to them, this is your wake up call. Don't rely, don't rest on your laurels. Don't go back into self-sufficiency and independence, but instead know that your true prosperity comes from being connected to the source of the true living water. 
If you remember, Jesus called himself the only way, the truth and the life. He's the one who is the life giver himself. And this Laodicean church needed to wake up and to realise that actually to build their lives on their own independence, their own self-sufficiency, their own you know, human wealth system was a very dangerous place to be. In fact, when Rachel and I visited this region and we heard the story of the springs and the, the, the sources of water and that beautiful picture that is painted here as the wake up call, our guide in um, Turkey also said to us that within about 50 years, 70 years I think it was, this whole region of Laodicea had been completely destroyed by an earthquake. So it's like the warning went out but apparently they didn't heed the warning and unfortunately they were destroyed. It was later rebuilt because of the wealth but actually the very source of life had been disconnected. So where's our message of hope today? It's like thanks Helen you took us to the Mount of Temptation yesterday and you've taken us to us you've taken us to Laodicea today but just as with the Mount of Temptation uh, uh, on Tuesday I think it was there is hope, there is always hope with God. And the message of hope today is, come on, let's pray for our nations at this time. That where everything that can be shaken is being shaken, as a wake up call, we pray that our nations would buy that true eye salve of the anointing oil of healing of the Holy Spirit that we might see correctly in these days. We pray that we would be like the Laodicean church at destiny call that we would be hot or cold that we would be of use to our communities around us we pray that salt and light would be profoundly present in our communities that we might be a signal and a signpost to those around us to bring them back to the true and living God for just like salt without its saltiness is useless and light hidden under a bushel is of no use father we want to ask you that you would help us to be salt and light and we pray for our cities communities and nations at this time especially the ones that have gone astray that have declared that they don't need God that have dis connected from their Christian roots. We want to ask you, Father, that this wake-up call of the shaking of economies, where we've rested so much of our security on what we can do for ourselves, we want to ask you that in this shaking we would heed the sound of the warning and the wooing of the Holy Spirit back to life, that we would come and buy gold refined in the fire, that we would buy the righteous robes of Christ to clothe our shame and our nakedness, and that we would indeed put on that eye self that we might have the right perspective in this season. And we thank you, Father, that your word carries life within it and that you know our circumstances so intimately, just as you knew the Laodicean church so profoundly intimately and spoke so personally into their situation to give them a choice to come back. So we ask, Father, that for our communities where we live, for our cities, for our states and counties and nations, you would speak a personal word directly into where we are, that people would recognise you know them and you love them and you're wooing them home. And we trust you, Father, that that which the enemy has intended for evil, that which COVID-19 has caused havoc in our nations with, we would turn around and see as an opportunity for a positive shaking that will bring us back to you. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. How about that? Was that a good enough tour of Laodicea for you? I hope that interested you. Rachel will pick up the baton tomorrow and take you on her final leg of the journey. And then on Saturday, I will take you on the very final tour of this week. I hope you continue to join us this week and may God richly bless the rest of your day. Take care.